Mr. Veera Raghav, I'll begin with you. You know, when it comes down to the speech which was submitted by the state to the governor's office, convention demands uh, that uh, the speech be read out as it is. But can a governor, have there been past precedents, deviated from that? Oh, absolutely. You've had past precedents. It's a break from convention and that's really the problem that you don't have a strong code that dic di dictates to what a governor can or cannot do and their discretionary powers. And the most important thing one needs to do is to avoid situations like this, have a clear code that defines the discretionary powers of a governor. Uh, it happened with Arif Mohamed Khan when he uh, read out the 2020 CAA uh, opposition resolution by the Ker in, at the Kerala Assembly and then later added that, look, I don't agree with that resolution. Now, it's not now. Raj Bhavans have turned into political centers all along. A dignified office that was supposed to ensure adherence to the Constitution has often turned into a political one. Mr. Ravi may have taken it one step further. He's turned that into an ideological point. It's not just a political opposition questioning ideological mission. I think it's extremely unfortunate. It, it demands that there needs to be a code which doesn't say that when a governor departs from text, uh, it's not just a break of convention. It needs to be clarified whether it is illegal. Uh, Supreme Court, other courts have, 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 have passed judgments and reversed governor's decisions, but they've stopped shy of defining that very clear code. So, so to answer your question, Preeti, I think this issue again brings to focus the need for a clear code. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, perhaps Mr. Ravi has taken it a bit too far. A bit too far, even trying to rename uh, the state? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's quite unnecessary, that kind of debate. I think uh, a lot of important administrative and legislative issues are the casualty when it becomes such an uh, such a battle between the Raj Bhavan and the Secretariat. Governments and governors, state governments and governors have had very uneasy equations uh, in our independent Indian history. You've had cases of governors acting as agents of the center. Uh, but when the Raj Bhavan turns into an ideological opposition point to a dominant ideology in the state, uh, I think it's extremely unfortunate. You know, there have been instant instances that you've been talking about, and I'll name some instances, Mr. Narayan and Tirupati, and maybe that would give perspective, uh, you know, to this conversation. Um, do you justify the Operation Lotus Charge, the controversial role played by the Governor of Arunachal 2016, Governors of Goa, Manipur 2017, Governor of Karnataka 2018, Governor of Maharashtra 2019? There have been enough instances. And now the face-off which is possibly brewing in Tamil Nadu, putting the spotlight on the post of the Governor with a question that is asked of selection of the post. See, a coin has uh, got two sides always. Normally, the media always uh, targets the governors. Uh, I differ from what Mr. Veeragav said, because there was no ideological uh, write-up or ideological, uh, you know, uh, speech uh, written by the government of Tamil Nadu. But it, there was some um, uh, facts uh, which, are, which were not true and which were against, uh, you know, uh, the uh, statistics and which were against the state. And that is the reason for the state of Tamil Nadu, for the welfare of Tamil Nadu, maybe, maybe uh, Mr. Ravi would have denied to read that. So uh, that, that is the problem. That is the problem. So I uh, see you, he cannot talk like, uh, you know, he's talking in a public meeting. So that's the reason Mr. Ravi would have avoided or boycotted or I mean denied to read those things. And uh, legally, he was entitled to But you to know, but so. Mr. Tirupati, the fact is it's unprecedented. Uh, the scenes that were witnessed in the assembly, I, I don't remember ever, ever witnessing a governor walking out while the chief minister is speaking. Leave alone that. Yes. Uh, when yes, has yes. the governor tried to rename a state which is going against what the, sta uh, uh, what the chief minister or the government wants? See, the, the, the governor, Mr. Uh, Ravi, was very decent enough to walk out because the Tamil Nadu Legislative Council Act very clearly says in their chapter 4, that when a governor speaks before the speech or during the speech or after the speech, no member can arise against the governor. Nobody can object against the governor. But unfortunately, even before the speech, during the speech, members of legislative assembly tried to interrupt the governor. Even after the speech, 
Yeah, member but because the speech country, was doctored, was the let reason me, given. Let me, let me finish. Finish. Let, finish. Me, let me finish. Even after the speech, a member from Kolathur Assembly constituency, unfortunately, he was from I mean uh, from Kolathur constituency, is the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. He had tried to interrupt the governor, and in fact, I demand an action against the member, a uh, legislative member of Kolathur Assembly becomes to be the chief minister. That's the problem. So now, why they have not taken action against the chief minister? The speaker says that uh, they have uh, spoken, uh, they, have, they have spoken about the sentiments. 